This is a comparison of helicopters from Ghost Recon Wildlands and Arma 3, both using a non-analog keyboard and a mouse. There are more options available in Arma. There's a standard mode and an advanced mode. If you use the advanced flight model, you have five more options. Show gauges will add gauges to the HUD. Rough landing allows for more forceful landings. Wind effects will allow the game's wind to push the helo, adding more instability and requiring control adjustments. Auto trim allows the game to adjust the trim for you, and it's basically stability control. Stress damage will damage the helo when too much pressure is applied to the parts. You can also move individual pieces of the HUD, making them more or less intrusive, along with being able to remove them and adjust the opacities of certain elements. Wildlands allows you to remove move HUD parts and it offers two types of flying. This video is mostly using the new controls. The classic mode has unrealistic amounts of inertia and offers less control of the helo, but it behaves more like a helicopter does. The helicopters in Wildlands look good enough from the outside. When you're in the helo, you press the throttle key and the rotors rapidly spin, allowing you to move very soon. On the inside it looks ugly, the gauges are blank, and the avatar doesn't actually move any of the controls. However, the first person is modded into the game. You probably won't notice any of these problems if you're using third person, unless you're specifically looking for them. Neither of Wildlands modes are as realistic as Arma's standard mode is, and neither mode offers as much control as Arma's standard mode does. Both modes are worse experiences and offer little to no fun. I'm using the new controls because it requires fewer inputs to move. There is no good reason for helicopters to be controlled by players in a Ghost Recon game, but if it's available, it should be good. Since recording this footage, I've increased the mouse sensitivity of helos in Wildlands, making it slightly less annoying, and I've changed two binds in Arma, giving me better control of the helo. I think Arma 3's helos look better, but I don't really care about graphics. Arma allows you to move the camera's position and angle for better and more realistic first-person visibility, as well as offering third-person. There are small details such as mirrors that can be used, gauges are colorful and detailed, the avatar actually moves the controls, and some of the gauges are functional. You can turn the engine on and off independently of the throttle, allowing you to land with far more stealth than otherwise possible. In the advanced model, you must wait until the main rotor is spinning fast enough or else you will not be able to safely ascend. On the HUD gauges are 1. Airspeed, 2. Above ground altitude, 3. Attitude and G-forces, 4. Vertical speed and a collective slash RPM mix, 5. A compass. In Wildlands, despite the new controls turning the helo into a drone, the combat doesn't feel smooth. Arguably, it feels even worse with the classic controls. The weight of the aircraft isn't changed by fuel or ammunition. The fuel and ammo are infinite. It somehow manages to be unrealistic and boring. The rockets are spawned in front of the helo and will go directly toward the crosshair. In Arma, the helicopter controls very similarly to a real helicopter, aside from the RPM and collective being controlled by one input. The weight of the helicopter is actually changed by the fuel and ammo, making you progressively lighter. However, in the game mode that I'm using for this video, which is designed to practice helicopter failures, most of the ammo is instantly replenished. Still, there is a huge difference in the capabilities and feeling of the armed little bird versus the unarmed one. You can easily and quickly demand too much from the engine, causing a rapid descent and a crash. If stress damage is turned on, it becomes even more challenging. Having wind effects on and auto trim off will also add depth to further challenge players. The challenge can be so great that it's nearly necessary to use a HOTAS or a gamepad. The rockets actually shoot from the rocket pods. It somehow manages to be realistic and exciting. The sound design in Arma is far better than that of Wildlands, from the sound matching the speed of the rotor to the wind gushing through the cockpit, it's more immersive, from the sound's travel time to the creaking metal of the pressured frame, it's more satisfying.
Karma also offers more vehicles, each with a somewhat functional interior and each with a role to serve. The placement of rotors also changes the experience, along with the blade length, the helicopter's weight, engine power, and such. The sound varies depending on the amount of dampening materials there are between the pilot and the noise. The animations are also better, even if the crashes are far from ideal. Bullets can ricochet if the angle is right. They also lose velocity based on impacts and travel time. Some helicopters have a HUD for the pilot's helmet, allowing for a more realistic experience. Some of the helos have GPS, radar, cameras on the missiles, cameras for landing, cameras for targeting, a list of occupants, and more. Helicopters are capable of sling-loading gear and even vehicles for fast reset flies. Some of the cameras have night vision and thermal vision, black hot and white hot. The pilot is capable of shooting the gunner's weapons if the gunner is not present, but it's always best to have a competent gunner in the helo. The HUD marker that's moving around on the screen indicates your trim. If it's close to the center mark, you are flying in trim. That means you will be getting the best performance out of your bird. It also shows where your helo will be moving, based around the center mark. The best way to describe flying a helicopter with the new controls in Wildlands is that it's a drone with an AI that prevents a loss of control. The best way to describe flying with the classic controls is that it's an underpowered and broken helicopter. Both of the modes in Wildlands feature physics that defy reality so that even Joe Biden could successfully fly. You would think that they could have made the experience entertaining because they didn't worry about realism, yet it simply feels terrible. You can use the mouse to fly in wild lands, but it feels just as bad. The best way to describe flying in Arma is that you're in a car moving at a smooth speed. You stick your hand out of the window and you wave your arm in the wind. It's such a relaxing experience. Simple enough that you can get into a zen state, complicated enough that it's not tedious, smooth enough that you can make your own rhythm, and stiff enough that you can feel challenged. If you're using the advanced flight model, especially with keyboard and mouse, the skill ceiling is huge. The standard model has a low enough skill floor that most gamers could, at least, take off and fly, especially if they're given guidance. You can use your mouse to fly in Arma, and it feels great. You can set the throttle and then fly by calmly moving your mouse. I wish the altimeter in the HUD was for your height above sea level. I think that would make it easier for me to fly via instruments when visibility is low. I also wish the speedometer was in knots, but I prefer using meters for ground movement, and you can only choose one. It may be possible to fix those issues with mods, but I haven't looked. I'm showing vanilla Arma, by the way. Wildlands only has a first person mod and a FOV mod. For the new controls, this is the rolling capability. Classic combines roll and yaw into one input, but it's mostly yaw. This is the yaw control. It requires me to swipe my mouse many times to turn. This would be far better on a gamepad. This is the lack of a pitch control. You simply move forward or backward. If you add a mouse input, you can get more pitch. Classic has better pitch control. This is the yaw capability of the classic controls. There is no input for controlling the roll. The mouse only controls the camera unless you choose for it to control the helo. Pitch control is better, but it's still not good enough because it's combined with forward and backward movement. In Arma, you can easily roll both ways. Because your tail rotor is fighting pressure, yaw is easier to change when your helo is moving slowly or hovering. Both the keyboard and mouse are capable of independently controlling roll, yaw, pitch, or any combination of those controls. You have full control of the pitch. None of the three axes are forced to work simultaneously. Wildlands helos ascend and descend hyper quickly in the new controls. This is how altitude is adjusted with the classic controls. At the start of the camera's whip, I am changing the movement direction. The delay seems exaggerated and the power curve also appears to be wrong.
the acceleration is painfully slow with the classic controls. In Arma, if you demand too much from your helo, the rotor will stall as the engine struggles to spin it. Descent is relatively slow because the blades are still pushing your helo away from the ground. You can hear an alarm warning you that there is too much stress. Along with the alarm, you will hear the rotor slow down. The blue bar on the gauge is essentially the throttle. In third person, the camera is too far away to pick up the alarm's audio. In Wildlands, you can go right through most tree branches. The rotor won't be damaged or even slow down. You can even place your tail on the ground without damaging its rotor. Aside from being unrealistic, it removes a large challenge of low altitude flight. For a game that is marketed as being authentic, it's a complete joke. You can simply bounce off tree trunks. I might not know much, but I'm pretty sure you can't hide inside of the trees if the game is being authentic. Because there's no difficulty, there's no fun. If there's no risk, there's no reward. The game also allows you to completely phase through bushes. The classic controls don't prevent you from going through trees, and you can even land on the collision cylinder of the trunk. You can slam into the trees without being punished. There's a low skill ceiling, and even a low skill floor. My favorite moment was when I intentionally rammed a tree and it sent the helo flying backward. Physics. In Arma you can see more of an effect, with bushes being pushed by the downwash. I didn't test for long enough to know, but I think bushes have an effect on the helo. The tree trunks certainly do. They will rip the rotor blades from your helo, sending you into an uncontrollable descent. Depending on the way you hit it, you can push over small trees, but they are still capable of destroying you. If the tail rotor is destroyed, the torque of the main rotor will spin you. With enough forward momentum, you can recover from it, but it takes skill. Here I used the auto hover feature to keep the helo parallel to the sea, but then I simply used the repair function offered by this game mode. Auto hover can be bound to an input instead of scrolling through the menu. This is my attempt to have fun flying a helo in Wildlands. I tried to lose control, but it didn't really work. It's simply not exciting. This is my attempt to have fun flying a helo in Arma. I almost never use third person. Because of that, I didn't make it very exciting, but it was certainly more entertaining to fly. Third person view definitely doesn't help to make things appear exciting. Still, the levels of realism and depth make it a far better experience. I switched to first person because it is more exciting. This is an attempt to roll the helo in Wildlands. Because of the unrealistic controls and physics, it can only be done in certain ways.
it's still incredibly simple. It's basically impossible to do a flip because you don't have inputs for the pitch. In Arma, you can do rolls in many situations. You can also do backflips, even though mine was ugly. I was under the impression that it was impossible to do a front flip while using the advanced flight model, so I didn't gain much altitude. Based on how close I was to succeeding, it's almost certainly possible. Because of the airflow, it's more difficult. This is a descent in Wildlands, requiring the mouse and keyboard. I was simply trying to have fun. The physics are absurd, allowing you to stop without any good reason. You can slam into the ground without damaging the helo. You can come to sudden stops and rapidly change directions. Because I didn't plan on showcasing it, this is a rather tame descent in Arma. It's certainly possible to do it at greater speeds and steeper angles, but this clip shows the momentum of the helo being stopped by the force generated by the blades. You can even see some shaking caused by the airflow. In Wildlands, you can go through power lines. It seems that the player cannot be trusted to think, same as they can't be trusted to control a helicopter. In a final attempt to have fun, I go under a bridge but crash. In Arma, the power lines can rip your blades off or catch the skids. I didn't even notice that I lost both rotors at once. Arma is capable of having some bugs with its physics, similar to wild lines. Because I included a rough first person landing in Wildlands, I decided to include one in Arma. You can't land much harder than this without taking damage. It requires the rough landing setting to be on. Here I was simply leaving some room for an outro. Then I remembered that I could showcase a skid landing, which is a lot more exciting in Arma than it is in Wildlands. You have to be careful to not flip the helo. The dust being kicked up looks much better in Arma. Finally, I decided to show how an air coil can affect helicopters in Arma. After this third person restarted the engine, I raised the collective enough that the downwash pushes off the ground and lifts the helo. There is enough energy to cause a hover over the ground, but not enough to keep the helo in the air if nothing is under it. In closing, because of the relatively brief amount of Wildlands footage, I decided to add some of the wonky physics. You can see the helo stopping absurdly fast, hovering in impossible positions, including when the blades are perpendicular to the ground, and otherwise being unrealistic and silly. Thanks for watching. Arma is excellent. Wildlands is trash.